Ever fired up your favorite game only to find your CPU struggling to keep up with the action? Or maybe you've been eyeing those shiny new processors, wondering if they're actually worth the upgrade. Well, buckle up, because Intel's announced all of the juicy details about their upcoming Arrow Lake S processors. It's looking like a game changer. Whether you're a seasoned hardware enthusiast or just starting to dip your toes into the world of PC building, understanding what Arrow Lake brings to the table is crucial for making smart choices about your next rig. In this video, we're diving deep into the, I guess what you could class as early information that we have on Intel's Arrow Lake S architecture. We'll explore what's new, what's changed, and most importantly, what it all means for your gaming and productivity needs. From core counts to power efficiency, we're covering it all. So grab your favorite beverage, settle in, and let's unravel the mysteries of Intel's next lineup. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. <sighs> I'm never going to be an eSports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son. It is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. Now, let's start by breaking down what we know about Arrow Lake S so far. It's a bit of a weird one because there was the date where we could talk about everything like we are now, but we still can't show performance until the 24th. Now, Intel's calling this an all new architecture for high performance desktops. And from what we can see, they're not kidding around. As the flagship model, the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K, is sporting some pretty impressive specifications. We're looking at 24 cores, 24 threads, four GPU cores, and a max turbo frequency of 5.7 gigahertz. Now, if you're scratching your head at that quarter thread ratio, you're not alone. It looks like Intel's actually made the bold step of ditching hyperthreading on this whole lineup. Yeah? You heard that right, no more of that virtual core magic that we've gotten used to. Now, at first glance, that might seem like a step backward. After all, more threads are better, right? Well, not always. By removing hyperthreading, Intel's betting on delivering more consistent, predictable performance. In gaming, where single-threaded performance is often king, this could translate to smoother, more stable frame rates. No more of these weird hitches when a second thread decides to muscle in on your primary thread's turf. But it's not all sunshines and rainbows. For heavy multitaskers and content creators, the lack of hyperthreading might sting a bit. Tasks that really lean on parallel processing could see a hit. We're talking video encoding, 3D rendering, that sort of thing. It's a trade-off, and whether it's the right one for you depends on your specific needs. Now, moving on from that, let's talk about power efficiency, because, well, this is where Arrow Lake S really flexes its muscles. Intel slides claim up to 58% lower package power in lightly threaded work compared to Raptor Lake R. That's not just a minor improvement, it's an entirely different league of cooler tier. We're seeing significant power reductions across various tasks, such as 44% in ProSion Office Productivity and 42% in Cinebench 2024 Single Core compared to the 14900K. But what does this mean for you? Well, for one, your electric bill might thank you, but more importantly, it opens up new possibilities for system builders. Lower power draw means less heat, which in turn means you might be able to get away with a more modest cooling solution. Or if you're the type who likes to push your hardware to the limit, it may give you more thermal headroom to play with. Now, moving on from that, I guess overclocking. An overclocking enthusiast, you might wanna pay attention here. For memory, Arrow Lake is bringing some serious upgrades in this department. Intel's given us room to max out our memory like never before. We're looking at support for up to DDR5-6400 speeds, which is a nice bump from what we've seen in previous generations in official support. But it's not just about speed. Capacity is getting a major boost too. We're talking up to 48 gig per DIMM with a maximum capacity of 192 gigs. And well, that's a lot of headroom as a Raptor Lake 14th gen processor supports up to a maximum of DDR5-5600 with a configuration of 128 gig on DDR4 and 192 on DDR5. But what does this all mean for you? It's lots of numbers. Well, if you're the kind of person who likes to run a million Chrome tabs while rendering a 4K video and playing a game, hey, we don't judge, then you're in luck. This kind of memory support means Arrow Lake can handle some serious heavy multitasking. 
Then for content creators working with large files or complex projects, this extra memory capacity could be a game changer. And then for gamers, well, while most games don't need this much RAM right now, it's nice to have the headroom for future titles that might be more memory hungry. Intel is also thrown in support for ECC or error correcting code memory and dual channel configurations too. Now, ECC is a big deal for workstation users who need that extra layer of data integrity. And if you're wondering about compatibility, Arrowlate's got you covered with support for UDIM, CUDIM, SODIM, and CSODIM. So basically, whether you're building a beefy desktop or a compact workstation, you've got options. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, pricing. Intel's dropped some info on their lineup and it's looking pretty interesting. The flagship Core Ultra 9 285K is set to retail at $589. Now, that's not cheap, but considering the specs, 24 cores, 24 threads, four GPU cores, and a max turbo of 5.7 gigahertz, it's actually pretty competitive relative to AMD's offering of the 9950X. But one caveat to note here is that because hyper-threading is removed, the 9950X is a 16 core 32 thread part, whereas the 285K is a 24 core 24 thread processor. So this can make things tricky when comparing spec for spec across the lineups, but it's close enough to extrapolate the point. Then moving down the line, we've got the Core Ultra 7 265K at $394, which gives you 20 cores and threads, four GPU cores, and a 5.5 gigahertz max turbo. And then there's also a Core Ultra 7 265KF at $379, which is the same chip, but without the integrated graphics, which is a nice option if you're planning to use a dedicated GPU anyway. For those on a tighter budget, the Core Ultra 5 245K comes in at $309, offering 14 cores and threads, four GPU cores still, and a 5.2 gigahertz max turbo. And if you don't need the integrated graphics, again, there's the KF, which shaves off a few more bucks at $294. Now what's interesting here is the pricing strategy. Intel seems to be positioning these chips competitively, especially when you consider the performance gains and efficiency improvements that we're expected to see. The removal of hyper-threading might be a sticking point for some users, but Intel's betting that the improved single core performance and power efficiency will more than make up for it. Now, speaking of power efficiency, let's dive into that a bit more because the numbers that Intel are showing are pretty impressive. We're seeing some serious reductions in power consumption across a range of popular games. In Assassin's Creed Mirage, we're looking at a 79 watt reduction in system power compared to Raptor Lake R. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 shows a 54 watt drop. F124 comes in at 57 watts less, and Total War Pharaoh sees a 58 watt reduction. But it gets even better. In Age of Mythology Retold, we're seeing a massive 136 watt decrease in overall system power. Black Myth Wukong shows a more modest but still significant 34 watt reduction. And the crown jewel, Warhammer Space Marine 2, which comes in with an incredible 165 watt reduction in overall power consumption. So on average across these games, we're looking at about a 73 watt decrease in system power consumption. Now you might be thinking, sure, less power is nice, but what about performance? Well, here's the kicker. Intel's claiming these power reductions come while maintaining approximately the same frame rates as Raptor Lake R. Now, given the complaints people have had in recent years about Intel's power consumption compared to Ryzen, if true, this would be Intel more or less resolving the biggest complaint that consumers have had with their chips. It means that you can potentially get the same high-end gaming performance that you're used to, but with significantly lower power draw and consequently heat output. Now, before we get too excited about these performance numbers, there is something that we do need to talk about. Intel's application optimization or APO for short. It's a bit of a curveball that could be skewing some of these results and it's important that we break it down. So what is APO? Well, in simple terms, it's Intel's way of optimizing how games run on their processors, which sounds great, right? Well, yes and no. While it can lead to some impressive performance gains, it also makes it tricky to do an apples to apples comparison with other processors, especially those from AMD. But here's the deal. Intel's benchmarks for Arrow Lake are using APO, which means they're showing the best case scenario for their chips. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. After all, if you buy an Intel chip, you'll probably be using APO too. But it does mean we need to take these results with a grain of salt, especially when comparing to non-Intel processors. I mean, let's break it down with an example. Remember those impressive power efficiency gains that we talked about earlier? Well, APO could be playing a role there. By optimizing how games run on the processor, APO might be allowing the chip to complete its work more quickly and then drop into a lower power state. Now that's great for efficiency, but it also means the performance might not translate directly to systems without APO. 
This is particularly important when we look at games like Warhammer Space Marine 2, where we saw that massive 165 watt power reduction and 28% increase over the 9950X. While that's, I guess, undoubtedly impressive, it's possible that APO is doing some heavy lifting behind the scenes to achieve that result. So what does this actually mean in practical terms? Well, for one, it opens up new possibilities for system builders. Lower power draw means less heat, which in turn means you might be able to get away with a more modest cooling solution like we spoke about earlier. Or if you're the type who likes to push your hardware to the limit, again, it does give you that, I guess, extra thermal headroom to play with. And this kind of efficiency gain could be, again, great for small form factor builds. Imagine cramming that kind of performance into a compact ITX case without worrying as much about thermal throttling. It's also great news for laptop enthusiasts. While we're focusing on desktop chips here, this kind of efficiency improvement often trickles down to mobile platforms, or in this case, trickles up when we look at Lunar Lake. Now, let's put it all together and think about what it actually means for different types of users. For gamers, Arrow Lake is looking pretty sweet. You're getting top tier performance with significantly lower power draw, which could translate to cooler, quieter systems. The improved memory support means you've got headroom for future games that might be more demanding, and the competitive pricing makes these chips an attractive option for new builds or upgrades. So what about content creators and professionals? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand, the removal of hyper-threading might impact some heavily multi-threaded workloads, while on the other hand, the improved single core performance, massive memory support, and better power efficiency could be a big win for many workflows. It's also worth noting and thinking about how this might impact the broader CPU market. I mean, Intel are making some bold moves here, and you can bet, you can bet AMD are taking note. This kind of leap in efficiency could push the entire industry forward, potentially leading to more powerful, but more efficient systems across the board. Competition drives innovation. And well, as I always say in my videos, that's always good news, especially for us, the consumers. Of course, it's important to remember that all of this is based on Intel's own benchmarks and claims with APO. As always, you'll need to wait for independent testing from the likes of ourselves to get a true picture of how these chips perform in the real world. And that's coming October 24th. Things like thermal performance under sustained loads, how well they overclock and how they handle a wide range of applications. Well, they're all questions that I guess still need answering. For now though, Arrow Lake is looking like a significant step forward for Intel. The focus on a power efficiency kind of way of looking at it, coupled with strong performance and competitive pricing, could make these chips very attractive for a wide range of users. Whether you're a gamer looking for high performance with lower power draw, a content creator needing lots of memory and balanced performance, or just someone who wants a powerful, efficient system for everyday use. Arrow Lake seems to have something to offer, and it seems like Intel are actually marketing it as that. Take note, AMD. That's where you went wrong with the 9000 series. So yeah, that's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully you enjoyed this, I guess, early look at Intel's Arrow Lake S architecture. Remember, this is based on preliminary information from Intel, so things might change before these chips hit the market. We have got them here, we're doing all of our testing already. Now, if you did find this helpful, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a whole host of goodies, including behind the scenes content, access to our testing data, bi-weekly game nights, meetups at our offices, and much, much more. The link is as always down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.